just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players from the University of Rhode Island. Today we're talking FCS Week 11. Why do you look like that? Why is that the look that you just have the most glazed over look on your face? I look, I never look at you when I'm doing the intro, and I look over and you're this is this is you. You just say stuff. Why you you just say look? stuff sometimes, and I'm just I, I just you don't be know how doing to shit, man. Like what you just you just have say a normal stuff. face. You just say stuff, and I don't. We're here to talk to me for wearing that on my face. I got to be better. But sometimes you say the dumbest, you you just say dumb things and I can't even, I'm trying to process that in real time. Not my fault. Be be better. Uh, We're here to talk what happened here in week 11 of FCS action. We're going to be recapping the USD versus UND game. We're going to talk about North Dakota State's big win over SIU and then other takeaways from the weekend. Sean, before we do that though, can you just share with a, a R uh, can you share with our listeners a quick word from our sponsor bet online yeah, yeah there we go no worries man the last of the major pro sports leagues is off and rolling and college basketball is ready to go as well bet online reigns your top spot for all your live betting action and contests college basketball betting in november is just ultimately a degenerate sicko oh gener- almost deplorable behavior but that's not going to stop me from doing it if I see a tasty line, I'm going to jump on it. And if I'm going to go somewhere and do that, it's going to be a bet online. Head to bet online today and remember to use our promo code BLEAV, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Here's a little tip from from the show, from the from me. Bet against a Louisville. They've lost two terrible games, exhibition games, against bad teams so far this year. Bet online, where the game starts. That's a good, that's a good one. That's a good one. Louisville's basketball program is... Not very Terrible. good. All right. All right. Starting us off with our box score takeaways. South Dakota State bludgeons Youngstown State in the these birds can't fly. Game oh, of the did you write them down <laughs> so I didn't get to see them? Or are you making them up as you go? I want to know. I want to know. If the bet, you, that's for I you to figure the, it out. I want to know if the bit lasted two weeks. That's for you to figure oh, out. Okay. That's I'm, sure, I'm sure I'll figure it out. Yeah. Thoughts on this though? <laughs> 34 to nothing is pretty nuts, dude. That is, look, I, okay. I, I know that. Don't use that one word. This is nothing to, this is nothing to do with Youngstown and it has everything to do with everything that we keep reiterating. Yes, we love the glazed South Dakota state, but when they're just this good man and they, they're not even getting challenged. One team has challenged them. One team. The rest of the Missouri Valley Football Conference is just kind of watching it all happen. The, you lose 34 to nothing. You were just standing there watching them play football. That's what happened. Yeah. Uh, it's boring. It's boring talking about them, covering them. It has to be. How how many? I, I, the, the thesaurus is burned out. My personal and every South Dakota State journalist, the thesaurus is burned out. There's no more synonyms. There's no more antonyms. This is what it is. A damn good football team that you just can't see losing. And I, I mean, no. Youngstown, I, I I wish I could feel worse about it, but Youngstown fans don't generate a lot of sympathy from me uh, in their interactions, their general demeanor. I don't feel terribly bad for them. But that's it. Oh, that's the end of your no, statement. I, I don't care if they feel bad. Okay. I don't care. Oh, oh so <laughs> <laughs> I thought that there was going to be like a qualifier. No, you're just like, no, oh, no, I, don't no, like I thought, oh, I thought you, I thought um, the, the, the recording froze for a moment. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was I sitting there don't. fully waiting for a follow-up statement. Wow. Uh, the sentiment towards the Youngstown state football team after some of the things that they said in their post-game press conference were very interesting. Uh, I think some of it was kind of a bit misconstrued. One of the players was saying that he thought that they didn't really do anything special and whatnot. We don't need to dive down that, but I know that the South Dakota State team is very galvanized and the fan base is very galvanized by That's that. Crazy I don't know. To say, because I get it. Uh, playing boring, uh, mistake free football doesn't look special, but it is. Right. I, I think that what the kid meant was that they didn't do anything crazy. But a lot of South Dakota State fans phrased it and kind of reworded it as they didn't, he didn't think that South Dakota State was very special. And I I don't think it's very fair to do, but at the same time, 
don't say that. Just just say you didn't make plays. You didn't have a good game. Let's, they were on today. Let's not There's set us plenty split. of good. Yeah. yeah. Don't put a target on your back. In the thanks for putting a target on my back game of the week. <laughs> Idaho falls to Weaver, thirty-one to twenty-nine. Dude, come on, man. Like, but okay. By the way, by the way, I, I did something I did not expect to happen. First of all, this is really disappointing that Idaho lost. Uh, Weber, even though they're out of the playoff conversation, this is like a total just you know steal your, um, steal your your what you messaged me. I just saw that your shirt spelled out Ireland. For you know not to send I me a message that while like I'm trying five to talk. Ago. You're an idiot. You're an. That was a minute ago. You just no, sent I that didn't. to me. Idaho losing is bad for the top landscape because we spent the whole week talking about how their resume is really good and they're really good and that they can beat a lot of teams. But I think that they're just not fully matured enough there yet for them to finish out and win games like this. Like this is just a total trap game overlooking an opponent and they lost it. I will say though that I I, I would think it's an accomplishment. I got a Montana fan who has been um, – in my mentions a lot. Mm-hmm. He, he con- constantly my, in my mentions, I think. Uh, not the Hempstead guy. That guy still sucks. That guy's the, still the <laughs> biggest dork loser. I've made peace with a good amount of the Montana fans. Or, I don't know, a couple of them. Um, what, what, the the, the one, the the, ble- the bleak guy. I know I called him out. I called him out, and I got him to admit he just likes being able to banter. And I was like, I, I didn't say this to him, but I got to be honest. I respect that. I respect that it way more. Life. When I get an intention from just a listener, admit it. I get, I, 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 a guy said, uh, hey, I've been listening since day one. Uh, everything you guys have been doing. I just like being able to bust your balls. I say, perfect. There That's we fine. go. That's always just cool. Just say that. I, yeah, the intention I, I actually don't mind immediately that. earns respect. Whatever that honesty is, it completely flips me onto your side because I, I don't know why. I, I like it. Yeah, I, I mean, you're just getting in the mix. Just... I like being in the mix. I don't like just jerks. Right, the, right. Just to target us is is it sucks, which is what oh, that Blake Hemp still said getting targeted. Does. By the way, he got like five mentions for <laughs> tweets <laughs> earlier in the week. Last night, I saw, after, I after saw. they capped it off, I'm like, what are we doing? Why am I? There's got to be a subreddit I mean, where they're get. just talking, right? There's got to be a Discord, something where they're just saying, all right, who's going after them now? Because they're mixing pitches. Um, I, I do appreciate, though, that the, you know, the level of I, I don't mind the admitting that you just want to be a part of the banter. And we've said this before. You know, we're, we're, we're here to talk shit and give each other a hard time. We do that on this show. I don't mind doing that with our listeners. Yeah. As long as you're open about it, like, I don't care. But like, if you're being a dick, you're being a dick. I'm going to ignore you again, like that Blake Hempstead loser who runs that goofy little blog in a town with like 15 people. Uh, but nonetheless, Idaho losing, this is this is very disappointing. Yeah, watch. Uh, I, I followed up on this game. Weber, if they played like this all year, would have been a ranked team. They ran the ball well at the goal line. Their touchdown plays were impressive. Uh, and then they stretched the field at times. They got some good sacks and and and, and pass rush. They got a they got a D lineman. I think over the last two weeks or three weeks, he got four sacks. He might be a lineman. I think it's Chad Kelly. I think might be his name. I'm, I I know there was another Chad Kelly. Um, they looked like a good football team. Weber ma- yeah. and Idaho making Weber look like a good football team. I'm not going to say it's not a little bit concerning. I think it's true that they overlooked them. Still concerned because Weber has been flat, weird, good, bad all season. And then they beat Idaho. All right. So how much are we going to start valuing the Idaho wins? That 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 is a factor. It's becoming a factor now. No, wait, 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 wait. I I'm I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to fall down that, that trap. You don't need to. The Idaho Idaho is still a very good football I team. I agree. Idaho is still a top 10 football Agreed. team. They lost a trap game to a, an underperforming team that would have been bad. I also agree. I dropped them, but I think that anyone who has beaten them deserves the credit for it. And that's why I moved Montana up number two, man. I I have no reason to doubt them anymore. By the way, I sent you quick thought on this before we get to the next quick takeaway here. I sent you a video of Coach Hawk for Montana <laughs> Where he's you can he's yelling so loud on the sideline uh, during the Portland State game where they beat the crap out of Portland State. He is yelling so loud. I forget what the the beginning part of it was. It was like like that like how does that effing happen? Oh, he said that's that's effed up. That's effed up. 
you candy ass. <laughs> and I got to be honest. I I know this is not what Montana fans want to hear. That that's why I'm bought in. But like, I Coach Hawks just a like a full. He's a football guy, man. Dude, just I'm so into coach. that. I'm so into coaches yelling at referees. I'm so sick of the. Oh, I'm so cool with my zip up uh, hoodie and my joggers and my ankle socks and my glasses coach like Marcus Freeman. Uh, not, no, no. I'm talking like a Mike McDaniel. I'm talking about all the, the, oh. the, the quirky nerd coaches or the, or the stoic Ron Rivera. I'm not going to show any emotion. I want a coach to be lighting up the refs because every, every game, every coach says, don't talk to the refs. Candy ass That's dude. our job. You know, it's my job to, to mix it up and get into it with them and, and, and do that. You don't do that. Well, it's like if your coach isn't saying anything to him, then you're going to. That's where penalties happen on sportsman likes frustration because you feel like your coach isn't going ba- going to bat for you. A screaming coach is a good coach, especially when it's in the referees. That's that is a point for Montana. Definitely, definitely a point for him. I respect it. I think that it's great, and I. I I'm in on it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little. I'm equally. I am progressively. Are we talking more about more and more? Is, in they, on they have not been in I, any of the box okay. takeaway game. This is why you need to name them so we can stay on topic, Joseph. So I'm. I am. I am. I am sorry. I need to keep, I'm sorry going. for there's that. There's a lot of fat stats. Okay, I know that there's a lot of fat stats in the. Uh, I didn't have a name for this one mm. game of the week. <laughs> Montana State obliterates Eastern Washington, fifty-seven to fourteen. Nothing crazy. I just thought this was nuts because a lot of people have talked about Eastern Washington kind of as being a another trap team in the big sky. 57 to 14 is a is a bloodbath. Here's a fun one for you, Joe. One of these two players will be in fat stats, but the two quarterbacks, Sean oh. Chambers and Tommy Malat, they both threw a combined between the two, eight passes with eight completions. Neither one of them had an oh. incomplete pass, and they only threw it eight times. That's a, they, sco- they scored enough, they scored right enough there. points to get a third quarterback in the game to take a majority of the snaps. In the uh, talk shit, get hit game of the oh, week, okay. North Carolina Central, who I was very high on, kept ranking them higher and higher, lost to Howard 50 to 20, 50 to 20. And the reason why I named it that, over the offseason, there was a lot of a lot of talk happening from North Carolina Central side about Howard, about this matchup. I believe uh, this is a is a bit of a, a rivalry game between these two teams two of the better teams in the I media. think Howard got we all bombed last year I watched HBCU yes. game days recap of this game uh and they yeah. do a really good job actually uh so if you like FCS yes. football give them a follow give them a you know go check them out I like I like you know they did a good job with this game recap and this was a game where Howard just took over and they ran the ball well no. they passed the ball well and North Carolina Central had chances they had a great punt return they had uh, they had opportunities, but Howard did not let off the brakes or let off the gas, and uh, and man, they look good. They look sharp, fast too. They look like a fast team. Yeah, it's disappointing because I, I was really excited about what North, North what North Carolina Central was doing this year. Yeah. Um, ended up bumping Fam U ahead of them, who is their other ranked Fam U counterpart. Yep. Yeah, I thought they've done they've done really well. Well, and then last one. Ain't that a damn shame game of the week? You and I loses to Missouri State. 35 to 16. I had expressed my concerns for Northern Iowa, why I think that they've looked good, but they've been incredibly inconsistent. I was given a hard time for not ranking them higher, and here they are losing to Missouri State. Someone tell me, someone tell me what I'm supposed to do with you and I this season. You tell me what I'm I supposed don't know. to do with it's them. What the- and, and, and this is they make they, I am out on them because they cause headaches. They cause headaches in this brain, Joe. What are they doing? Every week, you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're going to win. You know, you don't know if they're going to lose. And you don't know if they're a good team. I think they're, I think they're a good team. But they prove otherwise. There's this bucket of Missouri Valley teams that are all have the same record, have all relatively the same amount of ranked wins. Some have beat themselves head to head. Some of have, have really big blowout losses. And it, it's really weird to me that a lot of fans get really caught up on the rankings of in the ordering of these teams. 
But the reality of it is that you can rank these teams in any order that you want. And I'm talking about SIU, I'm talking about Youngstown, I'm talking about North Dakota, and I'm talking about Northern Iowa. You could put those in any order you want, and you're not wrong. You're not. No. That's what needs to be established here. And that's one of the things that has bugged me a little bit this season is the understanding that they all produce similar results where they'll play a really good game and then they'll completely crap the bed another week. It, it's We got to understand that there is a pretty big line of demarcation here between South Dakota State, South Dakota, and I don't even know if I'd even put North Dakota State in that conversation. It, it starts to get pretty murky. It's murky. It's murky as hell, and the FCS has been extra murky this year. Joe, I, I saw this, and I said, wow, that makes sense. Do you know there's a four-way tie for first in CAA right now? Albany, Delaware, yeah. and Villanova. I, but that's a good problem because they I all have one loss. I know it's a good loss. problem, but that's similar to that middle-of-the-pack B teams for the Missouri Valley where you're just like, could one of you do something? Could one of you do something instead of making us cut I this thing out till the end? I think that those CAA teams are better than the than those Missouri Valley football teams. I, I Delaware, know. they've Villanova, all got some in Albany. Losses. They every one of the teams that you're mentioning, either conference, suspect ass losses. The three of those teams, Delaware, Albany, Villanova, are better than Northern Iowa, North Dakota, and SIU. I think that they beat your any boys of those Richmond. Teams. What about your Richmond boys? Richmond has a horrible, horrible resume. So no, They're, I don't no. include them in that conversation. Okay. They have a deceptive CAA resume because they've beaten up on a lot of bad teams. All right. Let's start talking about South Dakota versus North Dakota. Look, we kind of said this in the preview, and I think a lot of our thoughts still stand. South Dakota's defense is really freaking good, and yep. that's why they've been placed this high. And I feel really freaking good about how I've talked about them. They're one of those defenses that justifies their placement for me all the way at number five, that they create pressures, they turn the football over, they wreak havoc. They're a bend-don't-break type of a unit where they just they really string you out and put you in a position where eventually you're going to make a mistake. But I still have a little bit of concerns with the offense. They left some points on the board. There was the one touchdown where he gets tackled and fumbles on the one-yard line. North Dakota covers the football. There was also a turnover in the red zone where this game could have been 28-10. to 10. It should have been a blowout. Yeah, the, not a blowout, the North a big Dakota, win. The North Dakota chase down tackle out of the back of the end zone to force a fumble, that's sports center worthy. That's a crazy-ass play. And I hate I hated this game because I'm watching the same. I'm watching a practice. I'm actually not even watching a practice. I'm watching like the second sc scrimmage of camp. That's what I'm watching because it's the same team. Both of these teams are so similar. Their offenses run the same. It's read option. <clears throat> Here's what they're doing. Here's what you scheme up for. And it's a good scheme to have in college football. I'm the quarterback. There's a running back right here. And all my receivers are running routes no matter what. I'm going to hand it to them or I'm not. And it's either going to be a, a play action, a handoff. I'm not running it, but you don't know what to do. And both of those teams have invested in that. They've invested in the read option. I think South Dakota is a little more creative than North Dakota because North Dakota looked like they ran six plays the whole game. It looked like they ran a, a cycle of the six. Yeah, six no, South Dakota at least had some route, route concepts. There was a great play from South Dakota where they did the same play. Okay, cool. Fake handoff. But they had a deep tight end post route. I loved it. It was a great ball. Mm. Tight end had a step on the defender, and it was good. I love that. I, I kind of, I'm kind of digging Bowman, man. It, but he kind of gets it out. It, it, it's kind of the ball's looking kind of nice when he leaves his hand. I, I was having similar feelings. <laughs> He's a, and I'm already, I'm saying pause before I make this statement. Big thick guy, man. He's got a good build. He's just he's slinging it. He, the guy. No, has, that's too many. Has, that's too many in one. That's too many. You can't. He has you can't say physically he's slinging it after the pre, after the prelude there, pal. You gotta have he, a different. You gotta have a different. And I know you're gonna double down here because you're a hack. He's just Don't built so well, man. And I, I just, I just love watching a, 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 a just a big thick quarterback. Look, in all seriousness, though, we don't get a lot of these big. Strong. He's not like rocket Juicy. arm style, but just 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 buff. 
he's got the John Elway quarterback build, man. He's got it, it, he's like Will Howard, but if Will Howard was was playing FCS football, where he's gonna be able to play well in the games that you need him to, but if you need him to play better against like South Dakota State, oh, he's definitely not showing up. He's definitely not gonna show up for that football game. Uh, final thought on this though. I have never been bought in on North Dakota's offense, and I have expressed concerns yeah, for North Dakota's offense. And I think they are they're not gonna be a it's not creative at all. It's not creative. It's it's a it's a, dangerous. It's a boring system, and they don't have enough juice to get away with a boring system. Some teams can be boring. They can afford it. Their offensive line is good enough. Their running back has spectacular vision. Uh, their, their, uh, receivers aren't necessarily jump ball guys, but they're great route runners and get it done on third down, like a third and six, like those teams can really afford to be boring because they have the little intangibles that make a boring, a boring team, not just a boring team, but a great team. You can't have a boring team without those. And North Dakota does not have those. They just don't. They're fine. They're a fine, good F FCS team, but they're not at that next level. North Dakota State, Sean, gets um, a very defining victory over SIU in a situation where their back was up against the wall. The possibility of them likely missing the playoff was on the line. Now they place you and I that these two teams are in a position where the winner of it will go to the playoff, and I think the loser will miss out on it when they play this upcoming weekend. But this game against SIU, not only did they win, but they won with an exclamation point. 34 to 10. Huge victory. Close at halftime, but that that run game, the style that they've played over the last few years, it wore down on SIU. We saw that with guys like Eli Mostert and that defensive line just they getting up. Up on Nick Baker. We, we we nailed it on the head where we said that if if Nick Baker has his the bad side of Nick Baker, if he shows up and he turns the ball over and he takes sacks, this game could get out of hand and North Dakota State would win the football game. And that's exactly what happened. They got after him. They couldn't get the ball out. They couldn't run the football. And the attrition of the game just eventually just took over for North Dakota State. I'll give it where it's due. Uh, this looked like a classic North Dakota State game. They ran the ball hard. They were blocking through the whistle. The defense, they were tackling and they were tackling hard against a team where this is not the first time North Dakota State's beat SIU like this. It's not. Uh, and it looked like going into this game, it was going to vary from that. But they buckled it up, and they went out there and played their brand of football that we've seen them play. And damn if they didn't look good, Joe, against a good opponent. I don't know what they tapped into. I don't know if they watched some old film. I, not, not Maybe they just had a good breakfast. But they were flying around, staying disciplined, and they looked like they knew how to win a football game again. Because the whole thing with North Dakota State, and why were they so great? And in my opinion, it wasn't because of the, the players or the coach that they had or the recruiting advantages of a, being a, a national champion. No. They knew how to win football games. They looked like they knew how to win them, and they were used to it. Getting to that point, any team can get a win. It's still 11, 11 men on the field drive and call a play. But knowing that you can win it and achieve it and, and say, we know how to do this. At Rhode Island, it felt like a scramble a lot. It felt like mm. a scramble. And we made good plays because we followed the coach's or plan. And then that's how it was. North Dakota State, the whole time when we were playing, was like, God, they look like they just know they're going to win. They know exactly how to do it. This is what that game reminded me of. A little, in, in, in essence, the way that they were playing looked like a team that they used to be. So I think that I want to talk about here, I feel like I've figured out what has been wrong for North Dakota State. And, and I don't know if this is the result of recruiting being re like just really difficult for these top FCS teams. I, I think that it's such a different world now with NIL and the transfer portal to even just keep guys. They haven't necessarily lost a lot of players to the portal, but them attracting some three stars, some like low end, like non three stars that are big G5 recruits, it, it's harder and harder. But the thing that I've realized is that their identity and the way that they play the game has not changed. It is the same exact approach the way that they've played, which is you know heavy tight end sets, uh, hand the ball off between the tackles, just grind it out, grind it out, quarterback runs, and then occasionally there's going to be some 
passes in the fold to provide some counters so that you're not just running the ball every single play. And it's very clear to me, Sean, that when I was watching this, that they just don't have those guys that they've had in the past. There's there's no Cody Mock. You know, there's there's no Hunter Lupke. You know, there's, there's no, no Hunter Lupke. Not there's Trey no Lance, Trey Lance, yeah. obviously. Christian Watson, there's no Carson Wentz. Dylan Radon, you know, Christian Watson, any of the guys. Yeah, any of the guys. They just don't have what has made North Dakota State so different and why they were able to play this style is that they always had a couple of not only NFL guys, but like highly draftable NFL guys, really good players that NFL scouts and I included were excited about their projection in the NFL. And as we're now realizing is that they're not transitioning and trying to bring in a different approach, they can't dominate the same way that they used to. Instead, they keep getting in these close games. Now they dominated SIU, dominated SIU, but I just see a team that is trying to do something that does not work for the way that they're built. They're fine. They're just not they're staying game. alive. They're staying yeah. alive right now. We'll see what happens in the offseason. This season, they're treading. And they caught a good wave, and they're going to be above water for another week with a very good win against SIU. Uh, but it is not the team of old with the dudes for sure. All right. Fat stats? Yeah, sure. I mean, you're already on your phone, so I'll just... Uh, shut right the in. hell up. Okay, I've been sitting in this chair for three hours. Just oh, God. cut me a little slack. Oh, God. Oh, how could he ever manage I haven't that? moved. I haven't moved. My ass is fused to this goddamn chair. Great. You want to see the ass print that I, I'm leaving on this, this chair? I'm sure the bricklayers feel bad for you, Joe. Let's kick off fat stats. Illinois State running back Mason Blakemore. Show us something here. 19 carries, 169 yards. Three touchdowns. A lot of scores this week. Had to take off Mid. just from... Some two touchdown scores, three touchdowns. Let's see you score three touchdowns, Joe. Monmouth wide receiver Demir Miller. Shut up. 11 catches, 333 yards, two touchdowns. How about that? Is, Is there that even mid? a debate? Is that mid? No, that's, a, that's the winner. Lafayette running back Jamar Curtis, 31 carries, 204 yards, one touchdown. Bethune Cookman running back Walter Simmons, the third, uh, 16 rushes, 165 yards, three touchdowns. You get on fat stats. Eastern Illinois running back MJ Flowers, 31 carries, 201 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, URI running back Jaden McKenzie, 23 carries, 233 yards, three touchdowns. I'm sure it's overrated. Over Ooh, Jaden McKenzie's overrated. <laughs> I'm joking. It's a joke. <sighs> Okay, good joke. Well, <laughs> Mr. Carolina, Shut up. quarterback Cole Gonzalez, 25 for 38, 363 yards, five touchdowns. They blew out some team. I think it might have been Eastern Kentucky. Oh, so they blew somebody out. No, it wasn't them. Uh, Bryant, quarterback, Z, uh, uh, God, do I have it right? Zevi Ekos, Ekhaus. I might, have, I might have mistyped. Zevi Ekhaus. Ek, something. Ekos. Something. I, I know I messed up now. Say it really uh, quick, really quick. Thirty-two for thirty-nine, <laughs> three hundred sixty-seven yards, four touchdowns. Look at your name right if you put up a stat line like that again. Tarleton State running back Kayvon Britton, twenty-two carries, one hundred seventy-six yards, three uh, three touchdowns on the ground. Oh, here's a competitor, Joe Montana State quarterback Sean Chambers, four for four passing, one hundred nineteen yards, three touchdowns. He also carried the ball five times for 75 yards and two touchdowns. So let's do some quick maths here. Oh, it already did it. Five touchdowns on nine touches. That required math? That's ridiculous. It's That's still ridiculous. Math. Quick math. Uh, Southern Utah wide receiver Isaiah Wooden, five catches, 123 yards, four touchdowns. Cal Poly quarterback uh, Sam Huard. 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 Yeah. Former five-star at Washington. Fall from grace. Well, it's not that much of a fall. 37 for 58, 483 yards, and two touchdowns. He also threw two picks. Uh, I always like throwing the picks in there. Uh, UC Davis running back Land Larison is capping us off here. 31 carries, 264 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, that's got to be – that's got to go to to Demir, Demir Miller. Man. All right, well, you make, like, that, your, make that your choice then. Go ahead. Let's see the highlight. There it is. Boom. I'm going with Sean Chambers. How could you not? How could you not? For the quick maths, man. For the quick maths. God, you do the irritating things that are unbelievable. To highlight that in solid purple is, is unbelievably irritating. This is how I know your computer's a mess. You just got your desktop has to be full. 
my desk my desktop's empty. Your what? It's literally my desktop oh, is okay. literally gotcha. empty. I didn't know what a deck top was. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. At Jody Leo and at Sarah's Radio, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, that's funny. We appreciate be funny. your time. We're sorry. I just can't speak for wasting it. Um, go to sleep. Like an AI bot. Like he's almost there.